Hey, I think they're getting nervous. I think the team is getting a little defensive. I went and uh, reeled in a few fish yesterday with that controversy that I started by talking about them, which I don't think I really started. I think they more so started it with all the bullshit they've been doing. I'm just over here saying something about it. But, man, I had Mel Kay, Scott McKay, and Michael Jaco all make some really interesting statements about me after that whole thing yesterday. Michael Jaco and Scott McKay in their videos, and then Mel Kay jumped into my Telegram chat and went tap, 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 tap typed away. And I want to address these particular individuals and the comments that they made. Attacking patriots? Attacking patriots? I don't feel like I'm attacking anybody. I'm just asking questions, you know. I haven't placed any judgment on these people. I don't know their intentions. I don't know them. I'm just asking questions. What's up with the insiders, the sources, the clickbait, the Nazara crap, the QFS crap, the all the claims that haven't panned out, all the dates that never panned out, you know? What's up with it? It's all I'm asking. And instead of getting answers to that, which I feel we all deserve, and especially those in their audience also deserve, uh, no, I didn't get any answers to those, those things. I got them saying that I'm attacking and bunch of, you know, a bunch of basically projection at me and uh, uh, attacks my way too. Weird. The Patriot label, I feel, is pretty overused these days. People love to throw the Patriot label out there just to feel good about following a certain influencer. They call them a Patriot. Oh, I feel good about following them. Or the said influencer might call themselves or their friends a Patriot so they can dodge accountability. They hide behind that label and go, oh, I'm a patriot or my friends are patriots over there, so don't say anything bad about us. <laughs> no, patriots don't grift. They don't hawk bullshit clickbait information on their channels and, you know, mislead their followers. Or they don't um, sell shit, which preface here, you know, selling stuff, having sponsors or promoting things isn't inherently bad. I do it. I have no problem uh, if other people do it as well. We all got to put food on the table. But the problem I have is when people sell stuff or promote things using bullshit information, using clear clickbait, not, you know, really being authentic or open to their audiences, right? And we'll see how they continue to conduct their operations, I guess, you know? Either they're going to continue claiming I'm attacking patriots and not answering the questions, I guess, and continue uh, pumping their clickbait and all circle jerking each other and they're doing their interviews and their little uh, team group. Or, I don't know, maybe we'll see them change their tune a little bit and they're get, they'll get a little more responsible. Maybe they'll get a little more responsible and authentic with who they really are and the information they're putting out there because a lot of their information really blows and then they try to lecture you in their videos about doing your research and it's like man i'm listening to this shit and it's just like basic basic conspiracy rhetoric like it's not actually well organized or detailed and of course none of them do any video editing to prove their point about what they're saying they could easily put screenshots up of shit but they don't do that so <laughs> i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes but let them keep talking i'm gonna keep talking it's fun man we'll see how it keeps going but no i'm not attacking anybody i'm not i'm i'm not slandering lying i'm definitely not lying I, i'm wondering i'm just wondering what's going on with them right and like i said i feel like I'm well within my right to ask these questions, and especially for the information consumers out there, their audience, we all deserve to know. We all deserve to know what the heck is really going on with all these people. <laughs> Hot damn, I kicked the hornet's nest today, didn't I? And those shells got so mad. They were all coming after me saying, Jordan's an attacker. Jordan's a divider. Jordan is slandering people. <laughs> Bullshit. I ain't slandering nobody. I'm just asking questions that I don't feel like enough people are asking about certain influencers out there. Questions that I think we are well within our right to ask. Because what in the absolute fuck is actually going on around that so-called team, as they call themselves, or that network around people like, you know, Charles Ward, Simon Parks, you got Robert David Steele in there, you've got... Ooh, who else? That Wano Savin character. 
Gene Decode, Michael Jaco, Mel K, and more in that group as well. Honestly, there's a lot of kind of unanswered questions that I think we should be asking. Like, where the heck did a lot of these guys come from? There are a lot of very new faces. What's going on with some of them that claim to have, you know, insiders and sources that, of course, go unnamed and anonymous? We don't get any answers about who they really are, where they get their so-called claims or information from. And what about the more or less clickbait? or stuff they promote that's completely unproven, yet they promote it as fact. They're not promoting opinions. And for instance, I mean like Nazara. A whole handful of them promote that Nazara or quantum financial system nonsense. A couple of them have promoted flat earth. I hate to say it. You've got some JFK Jr. is alive or is Q. A couple of them have promoted that. I mean, it's just... It's weird. A lot of them are new. Some of them are promoting real weird information. Uh, they all keeping their click. Like they're all doing their interviews together and like circle jerking each other, blowing smoke up each other's asses. And really when you listen to many of their videos, it's not that well researched. It's kind of surface level conspiracy rhetoric. And a lot of them sound the same, like they promote the same claims sometimes that end up being being false, but it's it's pretty surface level. Like if there was a mainstream of the conspiracy media world, this would be that. And then like I said, you get the information that ends up falling through, like how many of how many dates have claimed to be important, something's gonna happen this date, and then you know it comes to pass, nothing happens. Uh, just go back, listen to, through some of their videos over the last three to six months. I'm not telling you not to follow people within this, this team or network. In fact, what I'm telling you is to follow them more closely. Listen to more of their stuff. Actually keep an ear out and see where their contradictions come up over time. It might take a you know couple months or maybe even over a year, but... You'll end up noticing where their hypocrisies are, where their inconsistencies are, all right? And these are things that, again, I think we are very well within our right to ask. It's weird, guys, and I'm not going to shut up about it because I don't think I'm harming anybody. In fact, what I'm trying to do is get the message out there to everybody that you got to be careful careful with your thoughts, with your beliefs, with your emotions as well, because a lot of people are getting caught up by a lot of the claims that this group is putting out there and it's dangerous. It really harms our movement. Okay. Some people aren't seeing that. Some people are seeing that. And I'm seeing that because when the claims get made, people get all excited. Something's going to happen this date or Nazar is coming or the med beds are coming or whatever the case and then nothing happens. They get let down, their heart gets broken. And then that can send people into really a psychological depression. I mean, it can cause problems in their mind. And not just does it cause problems for the information consumers out there, for the viewers, but you notice quite often the mainstream media loves to weaponize the crazy shit that a lot of these guys pump out there. The mainstream media will write articles about some of the... Uh, themes or claims that go kind of viral and some of them come from this group and you know they all just enable each other it's a bunch of people enabling a bunch of other people to spread misinformation so what in the absolute heck do you want to enable that do you want that to continue yeah don't be afraid to to ask the questions and don't let anybody acting like a crazy narcissist who is trying to play victim shut you up i got a lot of people who are projecting their own narcissism at me today, you know, <laughs> calling, calling me the one that's in my ego and ungrounded and all sorts of stuff like that. When I'm like, Are you sure it's not you? Because I'm, I'm not doing really bad things over here. I think, I think it might be you that's a little triggered because you might be held on to your false idols or cognitive dissonance. So 
Don't be afraid to question, guys, and be careful who you follow. You know, and that includes me. Question me. Don't 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 take everything I say as a hundred percent fact. Ruminate on it. Think about it critically. Hi guys, this is M Seeker of Truth, and I'm joined today with Jordan Sather. Hi Jordan. Doing good, man. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to have you on. Um, so uh, a lot of things you've just said there in those clips um, where, I, you know, I feel really important. So I'm really glad um, that uh, we can discuss that today. Um, but before we do, I just want to quickly go into how I discovered you, Jordan. So um, I, a few years back, um, I was subscribed to a Gaia streaming service. I used to watch uh, Cosmic Disclosure. I was very interested in um, sort of Corey Good's story of being a secret space program insider. Uh, and that you know that show was hosted by David Wilcock and had some interesting guests. Uh, William Tompkins, I found was fascinating. I think that you'd um, you've interviewed. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, what was your so I that they then did a movie um, or you did a movie uh, with them, a doc documentary film um, above Majestics. And that's where I first um, saw you. Uh, and actually where I first you were the you were the guy who first introduced me to the Q drops through Above Majestics um, back in 2018. Um, so I, I hear that you kind of stepped away from, from those guys and, and from, from Gaia, is that, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, you know, I started my YouTube channel in 2017 and started really doing all this online stuff back then, early 2017, and then um, just kept pumping out videos, talking about different things, reporting on stuff that I felt uh, others weren't reporting on, especially the mainstream media wasn't. And then uh, after a while, I ended up getting in contact with Corey and David. And, you know, I, I produced Above Majestic with them and was in another movie movie that they did. But over time, really, really, it was last year, 2020, uh, I began to see some behavior from them that I just wasn't OK with. Sure. A variety of things. One of those was their business practices. Uh, there was a very litigious attitude emanating primarily from Corey, but both of them really. I just wasn't okay with a lot of the lawsuits they were uh, they kept banking on. And then also the information. Um, I started to notice them get kind of sloppy. There was mm. easily verifiable claims and details that they were talking about in their videos that were just it was just wrong. It was just flat out wrong. And I'm not saying they did it on purpose. They might have done it not knowing, but it was such like basic information that, you know, for them to get that wrong was just such an amateur move to me. So um, there, there was a variety of things. But yeah, I ended up kind of stepping away from them and wanting to go on my own path maybe about sure. a year ago. Well, um, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I, um, uh, about a year ago myself, um, I... I sort of stepped back from watching from watching them uh, the you know the cosmic disclosure uh whatnot and um recently before i'd got in contact with you i sort of wondered what they were up to and i got the feeling you know i'd watched these guys um you know a lot i'd watched a lot of i'd watched all of the cosmic disclosures i think that they were in so i really was quite invested in that um more more so because i was just intrigued by the story um, that that was that was coming out from it, and, and I wanted to, to to hear more. And like I say, William Tompkins, when he kind of validated um, or, or similar information to Corey Good, and you know, I found that guy interesting to listen to. Uh, he he um, uh, he claims that he uh, designed um, spaceships, right? Yeah, basically, uh, he he was in a think tank for Douglas Aircraft Corporation. Uh, Douglas is a precursor to Boeing. Boeing ended up mm. buying McDonnell Douglas and Douglas Aircraft. But he was basically in a think tank for them in the 1950s for about 10 to 12 years, designing uh, precursors to, guess what we could say, spaceships, more mm. or less, using electromagnetic drives and whatnot. And he has some various details and drawings and schematics from his old days that where he proved it. So... I think mm. William Tompkins had a lot of legitimacy to his story. Granted, these days, I don't take what anybody says as 100% truth, you know. Yeah. You I both. But uh, yeah, I really 
liked what William Tompkins was saying. And that's kind of one thing that gravitated me towards them, I guess. You know, I had been following David for a long time, since about 2011 or so. Mm-hmm. And Gaia, I was a big fan of Gaia for a few years, a few years there as well. And I even went and filmed an interview with Gaia in Boulder, Colorado, uh, back in 2017. But I just started, yeah, the whole the whole UFO community is a place that I got into, I guess you could say. I went to some events, spoke at some conferences, you know, talked to, worked with some people in that whole community. And it's just, I was kind of disappointed. I was let down by a lot of the personalities that I met and a lot of the things that I believed on the outside. But then I got into it and saw the behind the scenes and i'm thinking like man is this is this so-called whistleblower testimony actually legit like there's no yeah. proof for it there's no real evidence how can we you know, there's, there's a lot of claims being made that people didn't have evidence evidence for so um yeah kind of there's a lot of folks that i stepped back away from even that whole community granted i i got a lot of beliefs on ufos and i do believe there's uh, black projects or secret space programs out there, if you want to call them that. But yeah. you and me both. Um, yeah, but you and- know, people people on their YouTube channels they state things as fact and like this is true mm. and this is true and stuff that can't even be verified. And of course, they're not bringing much evidence at all to back up their claims. So I just I look at those people, especially the ones that claim to have insiders, as I'm sure we'll talk about more here yeah. uh, later on <laughs> in this show. I just you know I. Put that with a lot of salt. Hold it well, with a lot um, of salt. I've got to say, I, I I was saying that I went back to see what they were up to, and I saw um, Corey Good's Facebook, I think it was, and it's, it's all around um, producing this um, like comic book, like graphic novel around the space program, and it, it it just it had a real kind of everything that I read through the lawsuits, things like that. It just something didn't sit right with right. me in the pit of my stomach. I mean, of course, when I watched him, I was. Um, fascinated by what he was saying and I was like really interested like is he you know is he making this up is he is he mental or is it you know could it be true like very interesting but yeah when I looked back I thought hmm um and David Wilcock like you you know I I had seen him in stuff um I've known about him for for, you know a long time you know maybe even since uh I don't know how long he's been going but you know good 10-15 years um but yeah the UFO community you speak about Lots of, I'm sure, chills in there. Yeah. But um, yeah. we, uh, do you think, you know, we know that there's disinformation that uh, has been around, you know, forever in, in the truth community and, and any information community. But um, it seems much more blown up in the last couple of years. Um, and I would say there's lots of people out there grifting, um, which brings us back to, what uh, you were saying in the beginning clip um so basically you'd upset a lot of people just because you asked some really bad questions and you made a post called the team is that right can you tell us about that yeah something like that um so you know i i guess let's back up a little bit into how i started questioning when i first started questioning a lot of these folks and first came across them so you know like you like you mentioned i've been following and reporting on those Q posts for three, four years now, really since their inception and reporting on a lot of other things too, on my social media accounts uh, that I don't have anymore. You know, most of them got taken from me at the end of last year, but uh, in probably the middle of 2020, so about a year ago now, I started seeing some weird weird stuff start to happen in the truth community and some odd individuals start to gain fame. So Mm. this is where I first came across like a Charlie Ward, for instance, I remember him doing interviews with Robert David Steele last summer. And there was another, another gentleman, Charlie freak in -hmm. there. And I also saw Charles Ward do interviews with an, a, uh, woman that goes by the name Santa surfing. And there was some other oddities going on as well. David Nino Rodriguez interviewed Austin Steinbart of all people. (laughs) So (laughs) there was just a few things that kind of raised some red flags for me, but I just, I was keeping it on my radar, but not too focused on it. I just wanted to see how time progressed. What keeping an eye on it, right? Keeping an eye on it as things go on. But I will say 
that interview that I listened to with Charlie Freak, Charles Ward, and Robert David Steele, I explicitly remember it because I sat there thinking to myself, wow, wow, this is some bullshit that they were going on about. And Robert David Steele just sitting there like, yeah, I fully believe you guys. Yeah. <laughs> blowing smoke um, up their ass completely but uh I, I like i said i didn't say much i was just keeping track of it but then 2020 progressed a lot of us got censored to shit in october november of last year i lost big touch youtube accounts twitter facebook discord patreon and a dozen more uh two paypal accounts a bunch of it so wow. so that happened And then, of course, we had the election and everything that happened, you know, questionably around that election in November. We had the incident at the Capitol uh, in the U.S. here in uh, January, and then the Biden inauguration January 20th. So as things progressed through that, you know, we saw this whole group of new faces, this whole all these influencers spring up out of nowhere in December, in January, just kind of around that time frame, so many of them came to prominence. And then I started noticing them all do interviews with each other, mm-hmm. which over the summer, they didn't really have that many connects with each other quite yet. But then come December, January, you know, you were seeing these round tables of like five or six of them all together, Simon Parks and a Charles Ward, and you had Robert David Steele, maybe a Wano saving in there, Mel K. And again, like that's kind of why I referred to it as like a circle jerk. Cause it's like, they oh. all <laughs> only ever do interviews together. And all that tied into the design. Somebody who will come on and promote their rhetoric with them. They'll never, yeah. they'll seldom ever, if ever have somebody with different opinions or, you know, saying different things on their interviews. And then again, all spouting the same similar rhetoric the same talking points, same stuff that was generally, you know, more or less lacking evidence. And then there was some grifting going on between a few of them selling a lot of stuff, Mm -hmm. which I discussed in that video that you showed isn't inherently a bad thing. I have no problem if people out there sell things, have sponsors. That's not the issue. The issue is if you have sponsors or sell stuff, promoting bad information. Mm Mm-hmm. And doing it over and over and over again. Because I think it needs to be said, everybody is going to promote bad information time and again, right? I if I had the chance, I would completely redo above majestic. I would, you know, there's plenty of things that I've said that I've taken back, but I've publicly taken them back. That's the important thing. Right. I've publicly said something about them. Mm -hmm. And I don't do it over and over and over Mm -hmm. again. When you have mm-hmm. this claim or something that one of these individuals says, and they just say it over and over and over again, never bringing up evidence for why that's the case, and then yeah. selling shit on top of that, it's just, <laughs> I feel like it's so incredibly uh, disgusting, so slimy. Yeah. And so, I think it's um, becoming more um, obvious um, mm-hmm. of late, you know, it is, it, it's so much clearer to see for some. However, there are so many that are so sucked in, like, you know, um, like you said in that, in the clip, like cognitive dis- dissonance, you know, and, and, and they're being sold this hope, um, and, and things that they want to hear. And so they would much rather, you know, that they would, you know, believe their, this, this created reality or this disinformation, than believe people who they perceive as negative for saying, well, hold on, can we ask questions about that? Is there evidence for this? As you pointed out, they don't, um, provide any, screenshots links um any evidence to a lot of these these massive claims their their, their real evidence or their, their claimed evidence is is come from an inside source and and sometimes we find out hang on this information was put out on this blog um two weeks before so you're not right. reading it from from that um you know it's just it's so shady yeah there are there's a lot of different topics we could touch on here in regards to you know everything that's going on you mentioned the cognitive dissonance people are getting, and my gosh, you know, the whole idea of having false idols and false prophets, we've been warned time and time again over the last few centuries, if not millennia, by various sure. people to watch out for those false idols. And you are correct. You know, they put out this 
the these hopes, this hopium or hope porn, and even doom porn, as I call it too, or doomium, they bank on people's <laughs> emotions. And uh, they bank on people's fears, even if they seem positive. Really, the underlying foundation of a lot of their rhetoric is fear-based. And then mm -hmm. what they have are the convenient narratives that they insert into the conversation to ease people's fears and get them excited, bank, you know, pull their heartstrings, bank on their emotions, rope them in with that. And there's a variety of different topics that they insert that does that. Number one being Nazara or a quantum financial system, the fact that, uh, or the idea, not a fact at all, but the idea that we're going to get saved with this magic money in our bank accounts. And, you know, I, I call them savior psyops. Mm. So QFS, quantum financial system, which literally no evidence anywhere for Nazara or the QFS being real, but they'll still create some fan fiction narratives or some fantasy story as to why Nazara was about to be installed before 9-11 and it couldn't happen. And then we were going to get it. And then we were going to get it. It's like, no, that's, that's all just pure fan fiction. That's one of the savior psyops. Another one is the med beds. They love their med beds. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, no evidence for those med beds. They don't even describe exactly what a med bed is or what kind of technology specifically would be used in a med bed and how it would work they just like that bud word the buzzword, mm -hmm. buzzword of the med bed or the dates that trump's gonna come save us this day or we're gonna be saved on this day and then falls through they got to move the goalposts again push it back and once they get caught as to being wrong their next one gets a little more vague but they're still trying to groom people basically they're grooming their audiences and mm. the way I see it is that it develops a sort of Stockholm syndrome in their mm. audiences in that uh, they make some fantastical claim, bank on the emotions of the viewer, get the viewer all excited. That thing doesn't happen. Viewer gets bummed. Viewer then wants to figure out, well, what's going on? You know, they're a little bit heartbroken. They're confused. So they go back to the influencer, to the content creator looking for more. Content creator makes another claim. Viewer gets excited, falls through, and then that cycle just repeats and repeats and repeats exactly. It's it's like a form of digital Stockholm syndrome. Mm -hmm. And you know, the reason, probably one of the reasons why I'm so outspoken about this is because I was there. I was there 10 years ago. That's when I first heard about Nazara. A mm -hmm. lot of people following these folks like Charles Ward and Simon Parks, they think Nazara or the quantum financial system's a new thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a new thing at all. It's been out there for decades, actually. Yeah. And a lot of people have used these ideas to scam people. So I first heard about Nazara back in 2011 or 12. And this is when I was first starting to wake up. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I didn't know left from right. So I bought it. I bought the Nazara narratives. I thought that we were going to get saved by some mass arrests and Nazara was going to get implemented. We're all going to end up with millions of dollars in our bank accounts magically and all this stuff. Uh, and, you know, I was, and, do you want to say something? I'm yeah, I was, I was just, I was just thinking, you know, it, some people don't realize how damaging these claims are to people. Totally. Um, you know, some people refuse to realize this and you say, well, why, why did you just stop listening to them? Listening to them? Why are you reporting on this? Why, why are you, you know, what's wrong with you? Are you obsessed about this? Actually, you know, it's really damaging to people. It's really damaging to their mental health and financially and whatnot. You know, people believe QFS is going to be there next week and they've stopped paying their mortgage. The real people have, you know, I've got examples. You know, I have real people that this has happened to that have thanked me um, or, or, you know, not necessarily thanked me, but but told me their story. And, you know, they'd stopped paying their bills. They'd, they'd got into a rut. They'd, their family, um, you know, were just distant from them because they were claiming, you know, these guys, you know, that, that they're real. Q QFS is real. We don't have to pay our credit cards. Um, you know, they've got into some serious financial problems. Um, you know, the med beds. I mean, it's kind of sick. There's people out there that are, you know, my, my granddad's really, really ill. He's on death's door, but it's okay because med bed's coming. Um, you know, it, it's... And they'll it's just give up. They'll not try anything because they expect to be saved. And then all, no med bed comes and you thought it was going to come. So you didn't try to heal yourself in any other way. And then, mm. you know, yeah. bad things happen. So 
yeah, when Sorry. people are sucked into it, they don't realize from a bigger picture how damaging this is in many different ways. Not just financially, people stop paying their taxes or their mortgage and make bad mistakes because they were following these people on the internet. Or, yeah. uh, or you know, a lot of folks that I've talked to, they said that they're trying to, they're like a black sheep in their family or their friend group, and they're trying to help wake their family and friends up to different things. So they might mention something about Q or another subject, their family and friend goes to start researching that. And then the first thing they come across is like a Simon Parks video. And it's so asinine that then they throw out everything and they make fun of that person, that black sheep of the family or the friends, because the first thing they came across was like a Simon Parks or Charles Ward video with just mm. asinine stuff set in it. So there's many ways why this whole, I, I personally think that it's an operation and there might be some three-letter agencies managing this from the background somehow. That's just a personal opinion. Well, but yeah, uh, we know that there's certain figures that um, claim to still be um, part of three-letter agencies themselves, yeah. and people just seem to, um, yeah, well, overlook that, you know. <laughs> right. But then they have no problems calling me, you know, uh, people like myself, or saying people have got to you, Jordan, or saying that I'm MI five, MI six, whatever. But then they'll listen to the CIA guy, you know, <laughs> who, who admits it. Oh, it blows my crazy. mind. So, so yeah, I think a lot of people are sucked into it. They're getting damaged by it. And, and same thing with me, you know, 10 years ago, I was mentally harmed by it financially too. I mean, I didn't stop. I didn't make a very bad decision and stop paying my rent or whatnot, but mm. I was stocking up on supplies and goods, candles, flashlights, bulk food, things like that. And I was broke at the time, but I was so like caught up with this Nazara thing that I thought it was going to happen. It was just, it turned out really bad for me for a little bit there. And that's why I'm passionate now to help people see through a lot of what they're saying. And now with this environment is so much different than 10 years ago that it's not just a Nazara thing, but now there's my God, just claim after claim video after video of something that is wrong in it like clearly wrong or something that they clearly have not produced evidence for and they're totally duping their audiences their audiences are getting duped and absolutely you and i we're not attacking them we're not here to divide or caught up with our egos or any shit like that like we are purely looking out for the collective in doing mm -hmm. this we want people to see the manipulation that's going on so i don't know i don't know how else to say it you just kind of yeah. wait for people to get through that cognitive dissonance i guess absolutely great way to put it i think it's really commendable what you're doing jordan because you know you have a big following um and uh, i i know i've seen uh, in your telegram group because so i'm in that you know i've seen some people giving you stick uh, and stuff for doing it but you know you're sticking by what you think is right and there's so many influencers out there that might not be um uh, maybe grifting so much or grifting as hard as some of the others and whatnot but they wouldn't say a bad word and they wouldn't speak up for the truth mm -hmm. against some of the people that are doing bad things because they don't want the hassle of getting the stick or they don't want to lose their popularity because these are popular people like you said like this they're like the secondary mainstream media i mean you said something like that in in your clip and i've been saying that for a long time um so i was like yeah that, that's like an echo or something that you know i've been saying to people like guys wake up you've come out you said Oh, you know, all these sheep following the mainstream media and they've just jumped into, you know, a another created circus, um, basically. Exactly. Um, exactly. And a uh, few things I want to say to that. I think I forgot my first point here, but what a, a second point is that totally right. We've got a mainstream media that people are moving away from by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. Uh, and then I'm particularly talking about this country, but I'm sure in yours and elsewhere around the world, Absolutely. people are realizing that the mainstream media sucks. So they're turning towards social media for a lot of their information. I think the powers that be knew this. So they started grooming or handling certain influencers. However, mm -hmm. because they know people are going to social media for their information. And then when a lot of us were censored off big tech, they hot started getting onto Telegram and BitChute and these other alternative places. So I think the powers that be also knew that and were 
setting up their sort of psychological operations to to conduct knowing full well all these various things so one point here to make is that it is a little interesting how a lot of these folks we're talking about are still on big tech youtube mm -hmm. and twitter and simon park says that youtube has censored him so much and he can't post videos to his account and all these things but like I mentioned earlier, they don't do any video editing. He could clearly produce a piece of evidence to show that YouTube has taken down a bunch of his videos, but I haven't seen. Trust me, if anybody knows about YouTube censorship, it's me. They send you an email every single time they take down a video. Yeah, uh, you know, he, he same with Charles Charles Ward. Actually, you know, we've yeah. witnessed yeah. taken down his and, and how obvious, you know, for even on the interview that I did with Charlie Ward, you know, for months before he was saying we're setting just in case. I get closed down. We're setting up a website for you all to join. You can or you don't have to pay, you know, money to be in the insiders club, etc. And you know, you see the yeah, see yeah. the grift there. It yeah. was all and lo and behold, in January, the video that Simon Parks got taken down, I personally think he took it down himself and used that excuse for some fake uh censorship credibility. But the video that was taken down from Simon Park's YouTube was the one where he claimed to talk to Q on the phone for an hour and a half. <laughs> and uh, that he's, I, there was some other weird things said in this video as well, but how convenient that that's the video that got taken down. Maybe sure. he just was getting too roasted from it and uh, didn't want that out there, but who knows? <laughs> uh, although your point on their websites. So you mm -hmm. mentioned Charles Ward was pumping his website there for a while. Mm-hmm. I was digging into some of these characters and I come to find out that a lot of them don't do their own websites at all. No. Uh, the same gentleman who's based out of Texas actually does the website for Charles Ward. Same guy does the website for Nicholas Vinny Uh mm. He also does the emails for Vinny Amen and Charles Ward and for Robert David Steele. So if you go wow. sign up to Charles Ward's newsletter and Robert David Steele's newsletter, uh, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll see within the yeah. first day. You get like one or two emails a day from their newsletters, and it's the exact same like template that's used in each one. And then at the very bottom, you can even sometimes see the address as to where the person is doing their right. emails. He's from Texas, the Austin area. Right. So yeah, it's like there there's like a really business model some, copying. Yeah, right. Definitely seems to be some coordination. And then looking at all the other accounts that promote these, the team or this group on the internet, I'm talking about, for instance, on Telegram, there's a lot of kind of sock puppet, nameless, faceless accounts. They might dress themselves up to be like a Trump supporting account or a Q account or something like that. And then they just pump out a crap ton of content. Some of it's truthful, but then mixed in with the truthful content, you'll see Charles Ward videos, Scott McKay videos, Michael Jaco videos. And it, it totally looks like there's this huge network and of uh, accounts, who knows who's running them, but they're promoting the work of like Parks and Ward and yeah. all of them. So that could explain how they got so many followers so fast. Well, no, I also believe must... there's an artificial intelligence algorithm that's pumping them. You know, I, I'm of yeah. the belief that they probably don't have as many followers or likes or views on their content than it actually says right there. I think a lot well, of that we, might be artificial. We know for sure that um, Char Charlie Ward's um, counter, I think, his followers Oh, he says like 12 million followers on his website or something like that. Just yeah. like a stupid number on the counter. Um, well, we had someone go into the source code and it's an input value. Um, so someone's logging in there and inputting a value. So it's a fake number. Um, he, he's doctored. The fake doctor has, has got a fake doctored number uh, of followers. And of course, uh, when I made 30 reasons uh, why I don't trust Charlie Ward, uh, for two weeks after them, he, he'd moved, just moved his counter and it sat on 10 million and 17 for two weeks. Um, uh, it didn't change. So, you know, they had to throw the, throw the 17 just to, to rub it in people's faces. Just to grift, uh, man. Like yeah. it's pretty gross how much these guys dick ride Q for mm. clout and credibility and attention. I mean, they're using Q related slogans, things like that to sell their narratives, to sell their stuff, to sell their gear. Even I think Scott McKay his merchandise is on a website called Q Gear, 
us. And, uh, you know, as somebody who's followed that topic for since its inception, essentially, and is more or less an expert at it, they, God, they talk about so much stuff that is like the antithesis of what we were told in those Q posts. And, uh, yeah, it's like, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Watching Charles Ward do flat earth videos. I'm like, uh, okay, it's done. It's done. And then <laughs> this reminds me of the point I was going to bring up earlier because you were talking about it, the yeah. enabling, like there's a few of them who are really grifty, really grifty. Mm -hmm. A few of the, uh, few of the others within sort of this network or this group they're not as grifty they're not selling as much stuff mm -hmm. but they're just as culpable because they're sitting there at these round tables or in these interviews just enabling the bullshit to spread yeah. using their likeness using their platform to get attention on completely wrong information and manipulative people which is manipulative in and of itself so Absolutely. sure they might not be grifty but they're not speaking up when this dumbass on their video is saying that he's the new chairman of the quantum financial system or that he <laughs> talked on the phone with Q yeah. and they stay silent. That That's not doing the research. Yeah, yeah. That's not doing. Where's the integrity. Um, and where's the, you know, the, 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 the due, due diligence and, and care for others and your own following, you know, you're responsible for what right. you put out that's there, what you enable totally and, and irresponsible. who you protect. It, right. Yeah. At um, best, speaking... it's irresponsible if they're unfortunately just ignorant and being a useful idiot. At best, it's irresponsible. At worst, they're completely compromised and they're going along with the grifting too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, great point. Um, you mentioned Scott McKay. Um, so I want to kind of bring this back to um, the video we showed at the beginning and um, the team post and, and how you, uh, you, as you said, kicked a hornet's nest about a month ago. Um, yeah. And you got uh, some some notable people, some notable people in the in the truth community. Um, you know, they they uh, they sort of attacked you <laughs> straight afterwards. Um, they got really what, mad, really mad. Really and mad. I don't know if you're going to put up a screenshot of that post I made on Telegram or anything, but all I'll I put, did I'll was put that say, up over over this. Um, okay, yeah, I all I right posted now, but... was the words "the team," and the reason why yeah. I called it the team, I want to clarify here is because mel k called it the team in an interview she did with charles ward mm. and uh so she kind of gave me that name for all of them i had no idea what to call them but i said okay i'll i'll call it the team because they did mm -hmm. and uh i named about 10 to 12 people maybe though mm -hmm. you know they're all doing interviews with each other and and everything and then i just posted a list of questions that's it. I didn't call any of them a shill. I didn't say that they were deep state or liars or anything like that. It was just a list of questions that said, why do they claim to have inside sources? Why do they claim that Nazara is real? How come some of them are still on YouTube and Twitter and these big tech companies? Why don't they get attention and attacked from the mainstream media like some of us others do? And various questions like that. Mm -hmm. So really it was kind of a benign thing like mm. and all the responses i got from them for legitimate questions was just vile vile <laughs> hatred attacking the messenger jaco gotta hand it to michael jaco he was the only one who actually answered some of my questions okay. but his answers were shit they were complete shit in <laughs> uh in his video they were terrible so he did he like totally just beat it around the bush by answering what he did <laughs> He mentioned you in like three videos, like I think two straight off the bat, like on the same day. Yeah, I've got a video here you sent with me. Shit too. Yeah, it was really, really weird. Let's show it. Here we go. Jordan Sather says the team, uh, Mel Kay, uh, who's basically got her brains are bigger than Jordan Sather's brain, his genitalia, and his narrow little ass combined. David Nino Rodriguez, who could probably hit him one time in his little head, and that would be it. Kind of like, you know, what I would do. <laughs> uh, and plus more. Threat. Any one of us, you know, could probably, you know, have him on and destroy him. He reminds me of, like, someone that jumps into the bull arena. So he just jumped into the bull arena with little red panties, and he's like, I don't know why Jacob yeah. fantasizes hey, about being a little red. To all the bulls, and we're like looking at him like, 
what the hell? <laughs> He's a little punk. I can't believe this guy. He went from like one of our warriors to a little punk ass, All right? Jordan, you suck. You suck. I'm, I'm very sorry about whatever happened to you, but you know, it is what it is. Lots of love to you. Really he weird comments. Big and Q. I don't there's know where more. he's at. Now. More. He used to talk about Q all the time. So we haven't seen him talk about Q in a while. So what happened? I don't know. Well, there's literally Somebody a post with a big Q on my Telegram timeline. Kind of looks like it, to tell you the truth. Really weird comments, and what I found extra weird in talking about the red the red panties thing, the bull. Who's, um, yeah, who's the bull, Jaco? <laughs> super weird. <laughs> and and <laughs> isn't 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 <laughs> this is Michael Jaco, right? That's, yeah, that's from in his red Instagram panties. account. He did some uh, bodybuilding a year or two ago, a competition, and who who's in the red panties now? Yeah, uh, I'm, I I'm had no idea you were going to show this. That I'm dying. <laughs> Um, I uh, he, he, that, that body doesn't look natural is all I'll say. Um, oh but no! Yeah. I mean, I used to work in a sports nutrition store. I sold testosterone boosters to people doing competitions and things like that. At that doesn't look natural to me. Nah, no. Um, but yeah, that, but, uh, Scott McKay as well. I, I question thought, the naturality of his hormone levels. Absolutely, I thought that was that was strange that he was talking about red panties, and I'd seen this, and yeah. Any, anyway, so it's weird, weird comments. The the other one was, uh, he's like Mel K is like Jordan, but Mel K's brain's bigger, and, yeah, and her genitals uh, are bigger, and the, yeah, uh, which is weird. He's, you know? he's, I don't he's think got we're her genitalia. We could confirm if we wanted to confirm, but. <laughs> um yeah no just super weird and it, yeah obviously he was extremely bitter um about that um, yeah, yeah my... too smart of him to do these videos in like the backyard of his house too i wasn't mm. weird yeah um, he said some weird things recently as well um you know suddenly he's well, um now, yeah suddenly jaco is this secret space program person getting memory recall of and mm. all these you know experiences that he supposedly had in some secret time and in these black projects it's just like god remind me of the um, Corey good Corey goods rhetoric you know right like, and get this, back and who's say, gonna be on Gaia now apparently yeah. michael jaco did some filming with emory smith to be on cosmic disclosure for Gaia. Are you kidding? Weeks ago. yeah you yeah. didn't know that well yeah I, I guess he was setting himself up for that right so a few weeks Kinda, before I mean, make a video saying that he was in the secret space program to get on Gaia and, and you know, fit the narrative. I mean, I if, if you lost your job during the lockdowns, you know, just come out claiming you have some memories of being a secret space program whistleblower and Gaia will hire you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy just, job right there these days. It, you I mean, that's have to be truthful. Yeah, they'll hire anybody, I guess. That's, um yeah, that's super... Uh, yeah, I didn't realize that about Gaia and Cosmic Disclosure. I just thought it was a funny kind of, you know, we were talking about Corey Good earlier and the link there. Um, right. And it's, he's it's just really started saying weird. this and now he's going to be on Gaia? Like, hmm, okay. Um, who else we got? Um, Scott McKay mentioned you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's bring up that one. When, when Jordan Sager comes out and says stupid shit like that, I'm like, he just, dis he, here's what he did. He discredited himself completely because... And anybody who follows me who's known me my whole life, they know my entire track record, right? I'm blown away that this whole thing exploded on us like it did. I'm grateful, but I'm still scratching my head. How's this possible? Simple fact is he outed himself as either a shill or he's been gotten. Somebody bought him off and he's now being paid to attack patriots like us. <laughs> you see, these guys love to call themselves patriots. They love to call each other patriots and things like that because, uh, I mean – it's helpful at putting on a facade for the audience to get the audience thinking about you in a particular way. It's like they're forming their own reputations for the people who are viewing them. I thought it was funny that Michael Jaco loves to say love and light to Jordan right at the end of that clip there, but he's talking about punching me in the head like a minute before. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Total, Total virtue signaling that's going on. Uh, Scott McKay claiming I'm bought and paid off. Clearly a lie. Mm -hmm. How would this happen? I don't know how it happens. Well, when you bullshit your audience for long enough, there's probably going to be some people that stand up and start speaking out about it. So I don't Absolutely. know. Pretty easy there, right? But it's the same with all these guys. You know, no, they're obviously being paid off. 
uh, for calling out our bullshit, you know. Obviously, that's the... And, and so some people are like, oh, yeah, of course that makes sense. The CIA, they're, they're, yeah. they're being paid. They're, they're a controlled opposition. No, hang on a minute. Who's Who seems more like the controlled opposition, like right. the controlled people here? Um, who seems yeah, they're like very they quick to snap. More money here, the people... Yeah not getting paid, not a part of a three-letter agency, just talking about this on interviews, or the folks selling $300 tomahawks and uh, memberships to their insiders clubs and all sorts of stuff like that. Super, super weird. Um, yeah, and then there's Mel Kay. Now, Mel Kay, um, I don't know, did she come on your Telegram first, or did she send you an yeah, email first? Yeah, she got really upset. She, uh, or angry, she looked just angry. And she hopped into my Telegram chat and was starting, uh, this was right after the team post, and calling me uh, demonic, saying that I'm acting like a demon and all this stuff, and that I don't know her, I don't know her life, that I'm I'm a fool, you know, just, there's so much projection from all these characters. Mm -hmm. uh, they're calling me divisive, like I'm attacking them, like I'm having unfounded claims, and with you too, you know, they're saying that you're, yeah ridiculous and divisive and all this sort of stuff and, and threatening me i mean like you we saw what yeah. michael uh, jaco said um they've, they've said they've had some of them had not not mel k but some of them have put threats towards me and, and threats of people turning up at my house um uh, lawyers uh, coming for me um and yeah the, 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 all sorts of stuff um and just a lot of attacks and and, and claims about evidence you know um, I had that that uh, great British bird saying that I that Matt Hancock was my boss the other day. You know, it's, it's just it's just insane. Some of the stuff they come up with, but yeah, um, yeah. So so she come onto your Telegram. Yeah. Um, did she Telegram. do that after the email? Yeah. Or? The classic the classic line. Why don't you come debate me? Why mm. don't you come debate me? I don't know if you've had any of them uh call uh, for a debate with you but actually most of them are shy and away from it <laughs> yeah yeah they they uh most of them have shied away from the debate thing but even then the debate line is what a lot of narcissists like to use to try to make you look like you don't have an argument and that if they were to converse with you they would be in the right meanwhile obviously a debate with people yeah. like this it's not going to go anywhere they're just probably going to attack you during the uh so-called debate or bring mm -hmm. up their same lines i mean it would just it would be bad what, actually what, what mel k did, did actually put a comment on my youtube video after i did one with a, a interview with kirsten w and said why don't you have me on then but it got deleted but i saw it in my notifications um, yeah so she, she, had, she deleted she a couple a uh, couple comments out of my telegram mm -hmm. chat that she made but i was lucky to screen cap a couple of them before she deleted them but uh yeah she was saying that i was lying and that I had no idea what I'm what I'm talking about. Oh, she also said in the in my Telegram chat that she does not promote Nazara. Hmm. That was one I'm like, well, Mel K. I went to her BitChute <laughs> channel. I took screenshots of her videos. We're literally in the description of her BitChute video. It has her link to the Jazara Club website. Mm -hmm. First first twelve videos on her BitChute channel all promote Nazara right there in the description of the video. And then, of course, she does like a weekly interview with Charles Ward where he's promoting it in nearly every interview they do together. So to say, for Mel K to say that she does not promote Nazara, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's in her videos on her channel. Sure, she's not the one maybe promoting it, but the other person is promoting it in the video on her BitChute channel. It was just, yeah. So she got upset that I guess I was pointing out how she was wrong. And she kind of borderline, like, legally threatened me about a week or two ago. I think you have that screenshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she sent you a, an email, right? Yeah, it was a DM to my Telegram. Oh, was it? Hope you Is have it? an excellent attorney. This came from kind of nowhere, too. I don't know. I didn't, ever, I didn't DM her first or say anything about her. I don't think I was saying anything about her. But I just noticed this. A couple of days after the fact in my uh in my inbox on telegram and i'm like huh that's interesting and you would think if anybody was planning on suing me they would want me to have a bad lawyer but you know uh, <laughs> yeah just uh, uh, for the threat funny. of it i guess um, weird stuff. Weird. she was also um on talking about you with uh david nino rodriguez and uh he threw a threat around as well oh yeah that one was that one was weird 
besides that, um, did you see the thing about the, and the people in our own Patriot movement that are turning against us and folding up their lawn chairs and moving camp? Get the fuck out of here. We don't need you. Bye. Right. Right. You're holding us back. You're not one of us. Get the hell out of here. You're a fucking traitor. Right. And there's a, honestly, there's a, they're showing their faces. There's an event coming up in, in Texas I was going to go to. And I saw that one of the people that's been attacking us doesn't know us or anything is a speaker there. And I was like, well, no way. I'm not going to be involved. That's the thing. You got to, you got to. Oh, I'll show up. We're giving his face and he won't do shit. Yeah, He'll but shit you gotta... his, I'll have him shit his pants in public. Listen, I, I, I was going to debate. Trust me, I can do that. I'm good at that. No. Oh, I embarrass yeah. people when I see them. When I see trolls on the street, dude, I'm like, hey, oh, oh, I walk right up to them. They're like, oh, fuck. It's people like, don't realize oh, I thought we were just going to fight on the internet. No, dude. No. Oh, my God. Yeah, right. Nobody would come up to you. You're you're a giant. You're massive. Well, when I see him, when I see him, game changer, hello. When I see I you, when I see you, when I see you, I fucking remember you. And I right. will come up to you. Right, right, exactly. And that, you know, and that's the truth. The truth is, um, you know, the people that do matter. It, it's no I'm going to start going to events. So if you plan to go to events, plan to see me. And I will humiliate you in public. Like you try to do me on the social media. I will do it to your face. And I'll have you crying, motherfuckers. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully I can stand there and film it. <laughs> oh, you can. You can. It's, it's, Jesus. It's, I've done it so many times. Oh, my that God. Just, that's so great. It's, 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 it's just the funniest thing. And, well, that's because, well, that's the biggest problem of cyberbullying and all this online stuff. That's everyone's, the weakest bullying. That's everyone's weakest. a tough guy behind their computer, but uh, face-to-face, not so much, you know? It's hardly uh, They had the audacity to lecture about cyberbullying right after uh, talking about humiliating me in public and, you know? <laughs> like and beating you up as well. Beating right? me yeah. up and stuff and filming it, and then Mel K laughs like a witch. It's just... Uh, she was really relishing what, um, oh, what David man. was, she was tackling. There. Like, what, I don't know how he would humiliate me. I mean, it would be pretty easy. I would just have pull my camera out and ask David, hey, dude, do you really believe Austin Steinbart? <laughs> do, you, do you really believe that a quantum financial system exists? Let's yeah. just start there. And yeah, you could totally uh, humiliate him um, I mean, I with intellect. Humiliating themselves. I mean, I'm oh, just, yeah. I'm just don't need to do anything really. Maybe pose a question. Public, yeah. Um, yeah. So there was that, and then uh, there's also um, some emails you received. You also upset uh, Robert David Steele. Oh yeah, he got um, upset a few times. Um, so let's uh, go into. They sent you an email. David, like he just got roped into all this, and and I don't know. Well, he can't he can't see left from right now. Yeah, and but you know, I don't, th- I don't think he helps himself. And you know, we all have a personal, like we said before, responsibility. He should, yes, he may have been roped into all this. Um, but yeah, and, and he could do just fine if he went out on his own and did his own thing. Sure, I mean, he's got a big enough following and and all that. But for some reason, he still feels the need to pump the clickbait and keep doing interviews with these guys, and then have a show called Alpha Corner, I guess. And yet that little clip there did not feel like an alpha to me no or, it constantly uh, um constantly hit my cash app hit my cash app if you want more intel like this then 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 cash me outside and uh, all this <laughs> yeah. um it, it's um it's it's very um forceful upon his followers so although he is, is enabling others he may not um be pumping out much intel he'll say that oh you want 107 said this and blah 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 um but 107 um, doesn't even tell people his real freaking name so how still, can we trust that guy well um i don't tell people my name but then again i'm not pushing out this information oh, yeah. that's you, um, you don't claim to have secret super intel he, insiders exactly. and all that and i'm also not stuff. telling people to to cash me outside you know um right. so yeah i don't know about that you know i have questioned whether David feels, um, you know, David has been kind of roped into it and indoctrinated by some of these uh, personalities. But then, you know, at the same time, um, you know, he's really pushing for for these donations, which, again, you know, no problem people donating to him. But if you watch his videos, he kind of makes people feel really bad. And you know, his net worth a while ago, um, don't quote me on this, but, you know, was something like 1.5 million, you know, so he's he had money um so then he's going in saying you know even a cent will help me um and he's getting renovations going on 
in, in the background the on his video. All this, but I do know Robert David Steele was redoing his basement because he said that on camera and his whole basement was getting redone. I was told, I didn't hear this myself, but I was told David Nino referenced buying something, doing something to his house or remodeling. I don't know, yeah, but something like that. Yeah. Something like that. I just, you got to wonder where the money goes that, uh -huh. you know, a lot oh, of people um, get. And so I don't know. But anyway, Robert David Steele. Yeah. This is, you know, this is a fun one. So this is the first one he sent you. Jordan, your idiocy and disrespect has been noted. You have my condolences, Robert. Um, and he's copied in Simon Parks. He's, he's copied yeah, in so, Simon uh, I made a post, I think, on Gab and Telegram, too, where you could see it here. Somebody forwarded my post to Robert David Steele, and this is what I said. I just typed, quite a cult following has grown around these guys. Uh, I implore you to carefully examine their claims before you blindly believe what they're telling you is true especially when they don't have any evidence uh, and some of them are false and wrong. You can get the cognitive dissonance and blame it all on me all you want, but uh, I've done plenty of research and I'm firm of my views. I didn't call them shills or anything like that. Um, no, I think just a bad suggested comment. a few things, told people to think. And then Robert felt the need to, I guess, call me an idiot. And <laughs> <laughs> uh. I, I have his condolences. And then a couple of hours later, he sends me another email. And I didn't respond to the first one, mind you. I didn't respond at all, but I got this a couple of hours later. I'm getting some interesting red flags that your post caused me to seek out. Be true to yourself. I will be true to myself. I will see you on the beach when this is over. So I, I don't know. Felt like he was just trying to, uh, you know, keep that bridge instead of burn it. <laughs> doing, doing his spook thing. <laughs> yeah the um I, what's it the, the topic of the email here so you, you may be half right <laughs> i thought i had your condolences i thought i was an idiot two hours ago <laughs> no, and now, and now right. i i'm half right and then he sends me another email uh last month when i made the post about the team uh or no actually this was he sent me this email after i caught date i caught robert david Steele saying some really weird things about this event do you have the video about what he was saying okay yeah. we'll play that next yeah yeah so people will get the context of where this email came from uh he said my stupid shit is now annoying i don't waste my time on you anymore but others do and you're speeding up of my voice and your misrepresentation of what i am doing is beneath contempt i urge you to stop being an asshole i will not communicate with you again uh, again, I didn't respond to this, but he, uh, so my speeding up of his voice, I took this screen grab of him that you'll play here in a moment. Yeah. And I took it on bit shoot at 1.5 speed because mm -hmm. honestly, you have to listen to these guys on double speed or else you're <laughs> just, you know, hurting yourself. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I recorded him at 1.5 speed without realizing, cause I just, I just left it on. I, it wasn't purposeful or anything, but he mm. assumes it's purposeful, I guess. And he's saying, I'm misrepresenting what he was doing. I don't think I was literally at all because I just took his own words. Mm. So I'll why do you play this video? Because yeah. then people can hear him and exactly what he was saying. And, and I want to clarify what Robert David Steele was talking about here. Cause he was not clear at all. He was uh -huh. not clear in one bit. And in fact, it sounded like he was trying to spin the whole situation to make it look good for Robert David Steele in this tour that he's doing around America. Sure. But, uh, let's check it out. Yeah. Let's check it out. And then it's gas money, hotels, tour managers, musician salaries and stuff like that. So, Bottom line is I need to raise $12,000 a day every day for the next 90 days. And this interview with you could be a huge boost to the campaign when it matters most. It's always the first 30 days where it's, it's touch and go on money. But I have no doubt as to our success. We're going to be in Dallas with, uh, at the same time as Sidney Powell and Mike Flynn. I'm waiting to hear if we're going to appear on stage together. If not, Cynthia McKinney and I and others will appear in Dallas in the same weekend and we're going to be in so 
I guess we're looking. So we should expect an explosive April or a I, think we will April. Expect, I think we will expect a come. I, I'm expecting a come to Jesus April. And let me tell you, I was planning to start this tour on the 15th of June. Juan Osavin wrecked my life because over dinner, and I don't take orders from anybody, but anyone remotely connected to Trump, I pay attention to. And then Cynthia McKinney is my counterpart. So she kind of balances me. I'm between <laughs> Trump and a hard place. Okay. Gotcha. No, I get you. So, but Savin said to me over dinner, he said, Robert, he said, you need to leave early. You need to be in Dallas on the 29th and 30th when Sidney Powell and Mike Flynn are speaking. And you need to be at Mount Rushmore on the 4th of July. And I said, yes, sir. And I mean, that just fucked me up. Wow. Because it took away... Well, I would like to first of all say thank you. Welcome. Um, you know, I'm glad to have you, you know, former CIA spy, Robert David Steele. And I would like to uh, let everyone know that we are going to be discussing your bus tour. So where will you be traveling and when do you actually start and what states are you going to go through? If you'll allow me to share my screen, I can show you the map. Oh, Absolutely. Or it. Absolutely. I'd be very happy to. There you go. Okay. But here you can see we start in Atlanta and then we go west because Juan Osavin asked me to be in Dallas for a, uh, an evening with uh, Mike Flynn and Sidney Powell, who may or may not invite me to share the stage with them. But I'm following Savin's direction, and we will be in Dallas on the 29th and 30th. And most All right. So I want to clarify a bunch of stuff with what he was saying there. First of all, these three interviews, March 30th, April 1st, April 4th, I think they were, it was all within just a few days. So it really sounded like he was trying to get this narrative out there. But he explicitly stated that Juan Savin asked him to start his tour early so they could be in Dallas on May 29th and 30th when Sidney Powell and General Flynn are going to be there. And when you listen to the way Robert David Steele formed that idea is that he, in, he insinuated, he inferred that he was going to share the stage with Mike Flynn or Sidney Powell or almost mm -hmm. as if that was the reason why he was going to Dallas uh, is because he got invited there or something like that, right? Not the case at all. So what's actually happening is that there's an event in Dallas on May 29th and 30th that, yes, General Flynn and Sidney Powell are going to be at, but Robert David Steele was never invited to this. In fact, I was invited to it. A couple mm. of people I know were invited to it. I know the organizer of this event. I've talked to him on the phone a few times. Uh, this it's been planned as well for a few months. So it's already been out there, right? Robert David Steele didn't say anything about this event. Didn't say anything about John. Who's the guy's name. Who's putting it together. Didn't say that it was his event at all. Didn't say anything about other speakers being there. Right. He insinuated that he is going to maybe share the stage with Flynn and Sidney Powell and Juan Savin asked him to be there for that. I can confirm they were never invited to this event. They were not invited to speak at it. Even if they try to show up, they're probably going to get kicked out. Wow. So, so I don't know what the heck Robert David Steele was trying to, I mean, in my opinion, it sounds like he's trying to swagger Jack. Like he's trying to insert himself or themselves into this event and make people who are listening to him think that, He's getting all this cred by hanging out with mm. Flynn and Penny Powell. And that he's, that he's got validation from these 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 people in this event. Right. When they he's just never trying to were invited. So I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. So I I found these clips and I posted that exact thing that you just shared to my Telegram account and said, and I did this at the behest of the organizer. He wanted me to get out that you know people might be trying to infiltrate this thing. Mm -hmm. So I posted about it and then that's where this email came from. So he sent me this uh, early the next morning calling me an asshole and acting like I was misrepresenting what he was doing. Mm -hmm. No, he mis mis totally misrepresented this whole event in all of those interviews, didn't even speak about it, made people think that he was going to be there and sharing the stage with Flynn and Sidney Powell and, that's why he had to start his tour early so he could meet them in Dallas uh, because of Wano Saving and all this stuff. Like, who's really doing the misrepresenting here? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that's um, that's pretty crazy that um, you know that he would go out and say that and and 
and try and sort of siphon some valid, you know, validation from pretending that he was invited to that in- event. It's uh, right. and so, what do you think? We've obviously just shown a bit about the the big back tour USA. But what what are your thoughts around this? That um, that was it twelve thousand dollars a day that he's needing right. to twelve thousand uh, dollars a day. Meanwhile, he's getting his basement renovated. Mm. Right, as you can see in those in those shots, it was all messy and everything. Ah, and it's going on a jolly round the round the you know the whole way around the country, like not even in a logical manner, you know, all around the place. Um, Ninety days um, just seems like a a bit of a holiday with a brand new coach with with you know. Right, um, and now what, I guess what is Scott the purpose? Is hopping on part of this tour too, and he was trying to raise. I think he said four hundred thousand dollars to get his own bus and wrap it yeah. up and. So he's getting uh, his own wrap on his bus, but yeah. he's just recently announced that he's only going to be there for half. He's been, you know, not not half the donations. He's not giving half the donations back, but he's only going to be there for the second half of the tour now, um, which is bad. And the other thing we found out is that um, Robert David Steele's PayPal had been frozen. I think thirty thousand dollars worth has been frozen up. Um, um, and one of the things, one of the videos, he shows us all these hats. I don't know if you've seen that video. He's got all these different coloured hats to represent all these different parties that he wants to all get together um, behind these guys. So you know, he's got a red hat. You know, he's got, um, and he says that oh, well, I've spent twelve thousand pounds on hats, twelve thousand dollars on hats already. Just but on then hats. he's saying, sorry, just on hats, on hats, not like different coloured hats for to sell, I guess, during the tour. And it's like, hang on, where's your priorities? You're saying. Oh well, we need this money desperately to get the uh, security and the coaches paid in advance, things like that. But he's come out and spent twelve thousand right. dollars on hats to sell. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and Robert Steele, you know, I when I had my YouTube channel, I interviewed him a couple times back in two thousand seventeen ish, a <clears> long <throat> time ago, four years ago. And uh, I, you know, at the time I was still trying to figure stuff out back then too, mm-hmm. but time went on. I noticed things he was saying and doing, and then I just keep going back to that interview I saw Charles Ward, Charlie Freak, and Robert David Steele do in maybe June of last year when it was within maybe two minutes. They brought up Flat Earth. They brought up JFK Jr. B&Q or something. Charlie Freak said some real weird stuff about JFK Jr. Mm. And then Nazara was real. Right after that, Robert David Steele goes, you know, I, you guys have sold me. I, I'm all for it. I, I believe you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that all it took. <laughs> all it took. And that, that was my final straw. And I'm like, okay. He's, the he's pinnacle of American uh, intelligence, right? He, he's just going to say whatever he needs to say. And uh, yeah, to go along with it. Yeah. Mm. So... Um, what you know, it's really murky waters out there in the in the truth community. Where do you see the future of sort of the truth movement going now? Um, and you know, with us now as well, um, and others starting to speak out and say, you know what, I'm distance myself from these people, etc. Do you think we're going to see a shift? Do you think these guys are going to clean up their act? Do you think they're going to carry on grifting? It's going to get bigger, and it doesn't matter oh, what no, we say. They're not cleaning up anything. Yeah, I think you can see that as as well as I can, and that they're still, it, it must be a drug to content creators and, and internet personalities out there to claim they have inside sources. I mean, it's got to be a drug. They just can't mm. stop doing it. And mm. you listen to people, even David Wilcock, you know, he's my insiders, my insiders. And then uh, Scott McKay has his Overwatch group, which is, you know, who knows who the heck they really even are, or if Scott McKay even knows who Overwatch really even is, or if they even exist. I don't know. A lot of questions. But they just can't stop doing it. And there is a large following that's invested in this network. This network is getting support. I mean, there was that Thrive Time event in Oklahoma just a few weeks ago that General Flynn and Lynn Wood and Cindy Powell and I don't think Sidney Powell was there actually, but Linwood Flynn and a lot of prominent names were at, but this event was also bringing the likes of Scott McKay there and, and mm. Vandersteel who does a lot of work with these guys too. And it's, it's like, it's weird. It, it definitely feels like there is some non grassroots support behind this whole squad network team. 
mm-hmm. not just through voices pumping them on their accounts, but also sock puppet accounts that promote their content on Telegram and other social media. Uh, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. I think this shtick is going to continue to get pumped, but in the in the coming weeks, people are waking up to it. They're realizing it. And well, I was going to say on a small scale, I mean, even through my comments, even through comments um, on your Telegram um, to you and stuff, you can see that, you know, we people that are speaking up are having an impact. So, you know, even if it's not going to bring this empire of, um, you know, grifting down, um, you know, people are being helped um, by right, yeah. people, people like yourself speaking up. So um, even if, you know, this is, this is going to continue, even if, you know, um, I think people, uh, if as content creators or influencers out there watching this, um, you know, don't feel that there's no point in doing in doing that. Have your integrity and speak up because um, the more people that do, you know, I, I see every day uh, uh, people commenting saying how you know just found you. Uh, thank God you're someone speaking about this, or or actually now I've watched this now. Um, you know, I see um, I can see more clearly. Um, so even if you help a few people, um, that's that's important enough for me because of the damage it can have on these people's lives. Yeah, I see your I see your videos around all the time as well. Your Thirty Reasons Charles Ward video, and it's it's making a difference. So props to you for for speaking up about it. And you know we don't have to reach every single person in the world, but the more we reach, then they get the courage to speak up, and they'll reach people. And I'm noticing a few other influencers who are starting to maybe get the courage or feel the need themselves to speak up about Me too. what this, yeah. this network is doing as well. And, you know, it's not like everybody has to. There's different different strokes for different folks, I guess. Maybe you and me are more fed up with it or or we just like we like the, the Rochambeau a little more than others. <laughs> others want to be a little more politically correct and not yeah. rock the boat and stuff. But sure yeah Um, you know there's a lot of people trying to shut us up they say don't worry about them you know let them do their own thing you go do your own thing and mm. and there's all sorts of just lame excuses bad projection being thrown our way and it's it's all horribly lame excuses like terrible terrible reasons why people are trying to shut us up we're not dividing the real dividing comes from the folks who are just putting out bullshit information. I mean, imagine going to a grocery store, you meet a stranger or you're talking to the bagger bagging your groceries or something like that. You want to start red pilling them, waking them up. So what's going on in the world? Try doing that with Nazara. Try, 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 (laughs) tell them about Nazara and then go back to that grocery store like a week or two later. How's that going to work out for you? They're going to, they're going to go home, look at it. And think you're fucking nuts. You're gonna think you're absolutely batshit. Like, why? There is no helpful benefit to this whole Nazara or quantum financial system rhetoric that gets put out there. It's just, it's purely designed to make all of us look nuts. Mm. And and honestly, I think a lot of the propaganda that these guys are putting out there, the team is getting weaponized against us because I see mm-hmm. it time and time again, where you know. Something will blow up, like maybe the ever given ship in the Suez Canal. This is a good example. Mm -hmm. So some event happens. Different members of the team all pump out some claims or some rhetoric that's just left field. Like Suez Canal ship, oh, Navy SEALs are conducted an operation and saved like a thousand kids on the ever given ship. And I know Scott McKay was pumping that. I think Charles Ward did too. Michael Jaco did. You know, when there's a current event that they can capitalize on within a couple of days, they're all pumping out some rhetoric that's super clickbait that is really unverifiable. And it's just, it's uh, uh, it's building a foundation off what's popular. They just take whatever's yeah. popular and run with it and create some crazy stories to reel people in. Yeah. Charles Ward and chlorine dioxide lately too. He's mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. Chlorine dioxide's in the news, the bleach that isn't really a bleach, but conversation for a different time. Uh, it's popular, so chlorine, or, sorry, Charles Ward is going to ride that wave, 
but these guys yeah. they're just not that smart so they get all yeah. sorts of key facts and details wrong about it but anyway back to the suez canal topic yeah um so they all start pumping this rhetoric and within a couple of days i started seeing the mainstream media come out with their fact check articles there's reuters fact checking oh the navy seal operation on the ever given ship in the suez canal was fake news there's politifact there's facebook you know these large organizations will use the fake news that these guys share around to basically dunk on us clown yeah, on us that's really whole easy yeah we're, we're literally giving apples. them an alley-oop yeah. like we're scoring an own goal on ourselves by letting this dumb clickbait spread out there so mm. it is very important to talk about to fact check they're the ones that are in the grand scheme of things causing more division because the media is having a real easy time making truth seekers look dumb and then everybody out there gets confused so and, and then the grifting obviously the money and the energy harvesting really what it is the parasitic nature of their behavior uh not okay yeah. not okay um I wanted to sort of end the, you know, end this talking about um, something you said about in the clip at the beginning uh, and something that I really resonate with, uh, which was the psychological impact this has. But I think we on, on people that are listening uh, and, and putting their hopes into these things that these people are saying, I think we, we've kind of covered that already. But, you know, I just wanted to quickly say um you know that's really important to me people's mental health that's why i do what i do it's what i've always said it's why i started out looking into uh, the fake king greg hallett um who was really popular yeah. last summer and, and was the guy that made charlie ward really popular um when he gave greg hallett validation saying the real king of england blah blah, blah. um so you know when i saw that having a real impact on people's mental health i was like right you know what i'm gonna get all this information i've got to show that it's not true and i'm gonna put it out there and people weren't listening so i was like i'm gonna create a youtube channel and do that and people started to listen and and he's nowhere now so you know because he's now irrelevant because people have wised up to it because there's, there's enough information put out there so um you know showing people lying um and grifting and stuff you know eventually can get through to people um so i you know i commend you for for doing this and for saying about the impact this could have on people and uh i know that we're not on grift busters uh but uh i wanted to uh i like you guys show though man you, you all crack me up when you're bantering and shooting the shit together on that show yeah thanks man we we love doing it it's, it's good fun and in fact um i spoke to all the grift buster panel last night and they said uh They'd love to have you on sometime if you want to come on a Griff Busters. Um, but yeah, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, Wardy Award. Oh, I, shit. Yeah, I know we're not on Griff Busters, but I have to give you an honorary Wardy Award um, <laughs> for, for doing what you're doing. So much respect for you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, you guys are doing good work, too. Uh, bringing a lot of humor into all this, cracking me up, cracking a lot of other people up, and uh, exposing what needs to be exposed. And I'm just doing it over here in my own way. You guys are doing it in your own way. But I think it is having an impact. It is helping people see psychologically. Uh, and I mean, from a grand scheme of things, too, what these guys are doing. And it's not, it's not okay. You know, they are really sending a lot of people for a ride. And I've got folks all the time commenting to me saying, you know, I, I used to be caught up with them. I, uh, and I was terrified when I was, and they were all over the place mm. and they had to realize like, Oh, over time, you know, it just turned out to be a lot of crap and a lot of mm. unnecessary emotion. And that's the biggest takeaway that anybody could have after following this group is that you can't get emotionally caught up with people online that you've never freaking met before. You have no idea who they are. You know, Absolutely. it's so easy to put on a false facade for this screen. And then once the camera stops rolling, go and be a completely different person. Let that and mask slip as soon as you're off air. Yeah. Like, yeah. no doubt, you can be grateful for the information or perspectives that people on the internet give you, but you just want to be really careful getting that emotional attachment because it can so easily make you blindly believe whatever dumb shit somebody is telling you on the internet. And uh, yeah, it's, it's you got to so easily consume you. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, 
yeah, no, I've really, uh, I've really enjoyed uh, this this chat. I think it's been, um, you know, we've we've covered a lot of uh, really important stuff. So um, thank you for coming so on. Much we didn't cover too. Like, there's so many things coming to my yeah. mind right now. It's like, uh, so many well, examples that we could point out of crap these guys are doing and weird stuff. But yeah, I'm totally down to come on to Griftbusters or have another interview with you, and we'll set it up. Yeah. Let's do that, man. Um, let's let's do both. Um, but yeah, definitely. The other guys um, were were saying last night, "I'll oh, get them on Griftbusters, man." So um, yeah, you could save some more of these valid points to share on that show, um, we'll do, perhaps, we'll uh, or perhaps we'll we'll do another one of these. Um, but it has been uh, it's been great. Um, so thanks, Jordan. Really appreciate you. Uh, much respect for what you're doing. And uh, yeah, guys, I'll leave Jordan Safer's link tree in the uh, in the description. And um, yeah, follow MC Grotruth.